Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, and we're doing another installment of what the hell is going on on social media, mainly with these celebrities. Um, before I get into it, as always, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. I know some people have been on my ass about the vlogging. Guys, I've been doing really good. So if you're not subscribed to the vlog channel, where will it be? Somewhere up here. I'll tag it here. If you're not subscribed to the um, vlog channel, please do. I put up a Christmas one. I'll be putting up a New Year's one. And, you know, I'll be updating y'all as my year goes. <sighs> Let's see what is on the docket for today. We might not be here for long, um, but we have some things to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is the color purple. The Color Purple, the remake of it, the musical version, came out on Christmas Day. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the biggest Christmas, mm, how do you say it? Biggest box office, child, it's a big deal, okay? And it hasn't been this big of a deal since 2009. Family, here yes. we are. This just in from Jeff Goldstein, head of marketing for Warner Brothers, Team TCP. Merry Christmas and congratulations on our launch. TCP is off to an amazing start. Far <laughs> exceeding aggressive expectations. Come on. Yes. Yes. We're now headed at the moment to come in the range of 18 million today. Nice. At One this day. level, TCP would be the largest Christmas <laughs> day. The movie music, uh, three, the mo see, I told you, well, the, the movie thing. musical <laughs> is cashing in at the holiday box office. The big screen remake brought in $18 million on its first day alone. That's the second biggest Christmas Day opening of all time. So I went and I watched it on Christmas Day at 3 p.m. I thought there wouldn't be too many people, honey. The theater was packed and a very um, eclectic group of people, too. I was shocked. I think I was one of maybe five black people in there i said okay wow this is it, it's got a wide reach i'll give you that it was so beautiful now i will say if you're a person who's very tied to the original i don't know how you're going to receive it you have to be open to the fact that this is an uh a broadway musical type adaptation of the show of the movie sorry and um from what i've heard of people who have seen it on broadway with fantasia um being sealy it is that on film essentially it was beautiful. I'm not going to give anything away, but what I will say is the soundtrack is amazing. Whatever singers that they got together to do this project, mm, creme de la creme, so good. The actors themselves, so good. Everybody who I've seen do like a pre-screening was saying how they cried, they cried, they cried. Now I'm a crier, so maybe don't Maybe don't take my word for it, but in the first half, in the first um, half, which was an hour, because the movie's about two hours and maybe 20 minutes, I was like, where's the emotional stuff? Like, if you know the story, you expect what's coming. Like, is this really that emotional? Honey, the second half. Miss Fantasia? Miss Danielle Brooks? Wow. Wow. Taraji also did an amazing job. None of her scenes made me cry, but she did an amazing job as well. Her voice? Way better than I expected. I know she says she could sing. She just doesn't sing. She does the acting thing. She could sing. She can sing. Give her her things. Give her the coins. Cut those checks. Okay? Yeah, she deserves. Um, Hallie, amazing. The young lady who played Young Seely, I wish I knew her name. Actually, let me Google that just to give her her respect. Give me one second. Not that got her way down. She was, she was a pretty big deal. Felicia Pearl. Passy. I hope I'm saying that right. Great job. Amazing job. Like I said, Fantasia, Hallie, Taraji, Danielle Brooks, great job. Uh, Coleman Domingo, who plays Mr. 
it's going to be one of those situations. Um, it's going to take me a while to not hate him if I see him on my screen again. It's going to take a while. And I'm glad that the, mm, that might be saying too much. Let me just say he's good at what he does. He's good at what he does. Harpo, Harpo was good. Sierra was good. Her was good too. Tamala Man, I mean, come on, it's Tamala Man. I say all this to say, the movie was good, you should watch it. I'm trying not to say anything, which is me just rambling here and saying nothing at all, but go watch the show. Um, the movie, damn. What's next on the docket? So um, somebody sent this on Discord, I think it was uh, Miss Bond, and I had to laugh. It was Nick Cannon. <laughs> it was Nick Cannon on his Christmas tour, okay? It's almost the holidays. And thanks to me, the world now has 8 billion people. <laughs> the way this man had to hop, skip, and jump all across wherever he lives to go and see all these kids, I'm like, mmm. Hmm. I didn't see him at Mariah's. Not to say he wasn't there. I just didn't see any documentation of that. I was feeling like um, Tyra Banks <laughs> from um, America's Next Top Model, but she's like, learn something from this. I hope you learned something, Nick Cannon. Stop just be out here sowing your seeds all over the world. Like, you're not Abraham, father of many nations. It's okay, like you could chill. You could chill, it's enough. Um, over the holidays, Tamar Braxton. I feel like we have never spoken about Tamar more, like us on the internet, more than when it comes to her relationships. And that sucks because I truly feel like her talent deserves to be showcased a lot more than it is. And people know that she's talented, but her personal life always takes precedence over her talent. And it really is sad for me to watch. Right now, why she's in the news is because she and JR are engaged again. Ooh, is that proper? You gonna marry me? Oh, of course. Mm. 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 Oh my God, it's beautiful. Mm. Huh? Oh my God. I do right this time? Hmm? Is that beautiful? Is that beautiful? <laughs> hmm? You <laughs> Oh my God. Please go to Power Junior. Ah, where'd he go? Merry Christmas, my love. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, when it comes to these two, it just seems like such a toxic relationship. The cycle that they go through over and over again is just really tough to watch. Now, I'm not watching it in person, so maybe there's a lot of, you know, good that goes on in their relationship, but the stuff that they go viral for on the internet, it's just like, oh my gosh. We spoke about them not too long ago on live. If you haven't seen that, go and um, watch the old live, how I think about that. And so jumping off of the conversation we had on live, I wonder if they have talked about what exactly caused them to one break up and then have such a messy discourse online. Because if we're gonna do the spin the block thing, me personally, I would want whatever it was that caused us to split. And even if there's other things, it doesn't have to be the straw that broke the camel's back that we address. It can be the whole relationship. If I haven't seen a change in those specific areas, what's the point of restarting? It doesn't matter how much time has passed. It doesn't matter what experiences we have gone through. If those things haven't been addressed and I haven't seen a change in behavior, a change in whatever it is that I'm looking for, then I don't see the point in restarting. Let's be honest. The man, after they broke up and got back together, was saying, oh, I've healed. After like two weeks of them not being together. In two weeks, you've healed. Healed from what? The only thing you can heal from that fast is, is, is a cut. And even then, maybe not. 
You know what I mean? Like these emotional things that he was saying he had dealt with from before the relationship. And then in the breakup, he realized that, oh, it was showing up in his relationship. And in two weeks, he healed from it. That is crazy to me. So now they're engaged again. And, you know, I do wish them the best in terms of like whatever would be the best for them, whether that's being together or not being together. I wish them the best. I really hope for Tamar's sake that she is being cautious. I know with love, sometimes you have to throw caution to the wind, but seeing what she's gone through, like with Vince and then with um, Daniel, David, David. I think it was David and then now JR. I'm just like, what is it that you are looking for that you might need to modify? Um, what is it that you bring into relationships that you might need to modify? Investigate things about yourself that aid to the dissolution of these relationships or what kind of patterns are you seeing in these relationships? So you say, okay, I have to stop chasing this thing that is clearly present in all my partners. Um, now that's in me assuming that the relationships end for similar reasons. That could not be the case. It could be three completely different situations and maybe there were other men in between that we don't know about. Um, but I just feel like there is a pattern with Tamar and I really, really hope that she like steps back, takes a look at the situation and realize how can I break this stupid cycle? But like I said, I love love. I wish everybody the best. What we gonna do? What we gonna do? We can just wish her well, you know? One thing I really wanna see from Tamar is a North America tour. I know she's doing this um, Love and War 10 year reunion tour. I wanna see some more music and I want her to go on tour. I really would love to see Tamar on concert, honestly. I think she's so, so talented. I think right after Tony is her. And honestly, sometimes I do like Tamar's voice more than Tony's, but I think that Tony Tamar has more range than Tony, but Tony is so good at what she does that it pales in comparison. That's my personal opinion. Personal opinion, as a singer myself, I do think that Tamar's range is expansive compared to all her sisters. But Tony has found her pocket and she kills it. She kills it when she's in that pocket. Um, I wanna see more from Tamar, musically. The drama stuff, listen, that man, we don't need to see him no more. JR, we, there's no business. The likes of him and people like Mr. Simone Biles, they need to sit back. <laughs> that man need to sit back. Be like Eve's husband. Uh, Serena Williams' husband. Issa Rae's husband, you know? Come on. Anyways, moving on. I saw that there was a bomb threat at Transformation Church, I, just watching it, even though it was handled very well, I was kind of scared. Now, most, uh, yeah, come on, Meredith. Y'all support her, come on. Yeah. All right, another layer. We love you. I need everybody to gather your things. I need you to get up and I need y'all to evacuate the building. This is not a, uh, a situation that you need to be frustrated by. I need you to listen and everybody just open those doors. Go right out there. Merry Christmas. We'll let you know what's going on. Jesus Christ is alive and we love you so much. All right. Reporting live from the scene of the event, um, we have all just been told to evacuate church. Um, we don't know why. They said be cool, calm, and collected. To be fair with you, um, I think that made people panic a little bit more. Um, and now we, our car is on that floor. And look at everybody. This is everybody. This is everybody. I don't know how fast we can get out of here. Um, cars are honking. People were running. I think they have the kids on the like 
They have the kids by the Chick fil A. There's some kids still over there. Someone crashed? Oh, sorry. Oh, dang it. Okay. Okay. News reporter. Somebody, hey, somebody has crashed in the parking garage now, which is probably going to make the flow of traffic completely worse. There's kids still trying to get out. Um, Meredith, I don't know what your president was supposed to be, but I'm sorry that service got cut short before you found out. Um, hopefully Mike Todd still gives it to you. As soon as Mike, Mike Todd, yeah. As soon as Mike, um, Pastor Mike Todd was told about the threat, he handled it so perfectly. The calmness in his voice, everything was just handled so great. I saw some news interviews after the fact and people in the congregation thought that it was like part of the service. They didn't know that it was a serious situation, but then later we are, later on we were told that it was a bomb threat. I feel for people who live in places like the United States, not to say that Canada has no threats on safety or anything, but the way that people have just come so accustomed to, they've become so accustomed to bomb threats, to school shootings, to like police brutality, like it's become so common for y'all living in the States and in specific places, I'm not saying this is everywhere and all the time. It's sad. Like it's so sad to see. Yes, he handled it well, but I think in part it has to do with the fact that you almost expect stuff like this to happen, especially in a church. Cause we've seen these terrorist attacks, um, happen in churches and stuff. There's all these people congregated in one place on Christmas Eve. I'm not even sure if the bomb threat was for real, for real, or if there was some suspicion and they just decided to take the safe route just in case. But that is very scary. Very, very scary. For the Christians in, in the chat, whoever is watching the video, you know that like the end times is supposed to be surrounded by stuff like this. And it kind of feels like we're getting there. And it's very scary, like all the natural disasters, the terrorist attacks, the wars, the rumors of wars, the, the you know, threatening the lives of, of Christians and large groups of people. Like this is what comes with the end times. It's scary. It's very scary. I'm glad that everybody in there was safe. I'm glad that they had a leader who was very calm and collected when handling the situation. And yeah, I hope that this is um, something that doesn't happen again. I, I hope that it was just... I don't, I don't even know what I could say. A bruise? <laughs> I hope that it was just something. I hope that it actually wasn't a serious thing to be worried about. So let's move on. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is Halle Bailey. I don't really want to talk about it because I feel like until I hear from Halle herself, then we don't need to be worried about what is or isn't going on in her womb. She was doing Christmas with her boyfriend, DDG, and while they were making cookies or something, I'm not quite sure, it was seen that she is not pregnant, which goes against what damn near all of social media has been saying for the last however many months. No, I haven't seen a blue box. Big, 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 big. Uh oh. Tiff, 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 Tiffany. Uh oh. Oh, Tiffany and company. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. That's what the is it? one. Woo! Yeah. What is it? No. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. Watch the video. Oh! This is, a, this is actually a bracelet that you double wrap. Let me show you how it works.
Of course, now on social media, the story has turned into, oh, well, that's because she just had the baby. You can't win with the internet. You cannot win. I kind of get the speculation because it's like all this time you're wearing these big clothes. We didn't get to see your body or whatever. And now we get to see it. I just feel like if the lady doesn't want to say anything, that's her prerogative. If she doesn't want to show the baby, if there even is a baby, that is her prerogative. I thought we had learned to stop policing women's wombs. Stop policing women's bodies. This is a part of it. If y'all remember, there was a situation with Funky Dineva. Hopefully I can find it because I know that Fox, um, Fox Soul took it down. <laughs> he was so mad at the fact that Hallie wouldn't just come out and say that she was pregnant. Like he was genuinely upset. And y'all better keep my sister's name out your mouth. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shit. Lord. I can officially say I don't like her. Chloe Bailey is so goddamn lame to me. First of all, girl, you are Miss Preppy Ashley from the suburbs. Then you came out, you was being all promiscuous and shit, and then now you're trying to be a gangster. None of it is fucking believable, girl. None of it is believable. And without that makeup, she ain't cute. She should have never showed up on that camera with that fat ass face without no makeup. She ain't cute. You're not believable. You're so goddamn inauthentic. That's why your shit ain't selling. I don't like people playing in our face, right? The girl is clearly pregnant. She's pregnant, all right? I analyzed that video. It's one thing to have the big piece on. She was waddling, and then when she went to put her arm around the girl, the, the dress draped over the stomach. You could visibly see the damn bump, all right? She didn't shut down shit showing these old-ass videos. If she wanted to shut something down, she'd have stayed her ass to hell home, all right? That's number one. Number two... That, that video, that old ass B-roll, stop playing in our damn face. And if you really wanted to shut shit down, all you had to do the next day was be like, child, y'all know y'all know y'all need to stop playing. Pregnant where? She's playing. I mean, there they're, they're they're was just such a cheap, quick, dirty, easy way to shut it down. Mama is pregnant. And listen, the biggest concern is not her being pregnant in Disney. The biggest concern is her being pregnant from that goddamn loser. Mama, we was looking out for you, Haley. And you don't fuck around and let this nigga trap you. Because that's exactly what he did. He struck me as a type that put a baby on her own purpose. All right? And we was rooting for you. All right? Now, I hope that we live in a more progressive generation and society where it won't affect her Disney stuff. It probably will now because you can't be right here playing a child and you a whole damn mama. But I think the black community, and although she don't belong to us and she don't owe us shit, I just think we're grossly disappointed because we saw more for her than this damn loser that she's with. I'm over here like, okay, and then if she tells you she's pregnant, then what? Okay, now we know, then what? Like, it doesn't change our lives in any capacity at all all it does is now um start the conversation of oh she's ruining her career she's ruining her life she's too young she needs to leave that man she's just getting started why would she get pregnant like you know you've heard the conversations for years every time a young woman gets pregnant especially if she is in the music business she's throwing her life away she's gonna ruin her career she's not gonna be worth anything it happens all the time so listen i'm with holly girl if you are pregnant or if you were pregnant and you want to keep it from the people, that's your business. If you were never pregnant and you were trolling us, honestly, that would be even better. That would be even better. I feel like if ever I became a celebrity, I would be a perpetual troll, kind of like SZA. SZA is such a pathological liar, but at this point, it's just a part of the bit because we're not entitled to these people's lives. We're really not. We're really not. And so... um. I think about her situation and two situations situations in my personal life come to mind. Um, I've, I'm trying to see how much I can divulge without invading people's privacy. There's one situation where a woman lost uh, a baby soon after having the child to something I'm, I'm not going to say on the internet. And then I know somebody else who lost their baby maybe a month out of being due. So 
put yourself in the shoes of somebody who I should have gave a trigger warning. So sorry. I should have gave a trigger warning um, to anybody who's lost a baby. My condolences. Anybody who's trying and it's not working out. My condolences to you guys as well. Um, put yourself in a situation of a woman who has prepared for nine or so months, hopefully, to have a baby and then gone. In the entertainment world, you've told the entire world. Now, as people were celebrating you, you now have to backtrack and be like, oh no, I lost a baby. Now all those same people who were celebrating you now are giving their condolences to you and it's overwhelming. Sometimes you don't want to talk about it. Sometimes you, you just would rather pretend it didn't happen for a while just so that you can cope and then to hear the constant reminder of that loss is a lot. It's a lot. So even if, let's speculate, if she did have the baby, I would understand her wanting to keep it quiet because you literally never know what kind of complications you could have, the baby could have, you just don't know. And if she never had a baby, that'll teach y'all to mind your business. <laughs> that'll teach y'all to mind your damn business because it's not our business to know whether or not she's pregnant. It is definitely not our business to be as irate as some people have been on the internet because she wouldn't confirm whether or not she was pregnant. So it was nice to see her enjoying Christmas. It's nice to see everybody from the cast of The Color Purple just, you know, reveling in the success of the movie. There was a lot of skepticism. I, I understand it. Some remakes, I hate Color Purple. I liked it. I did. You guys let me know how you felt about the movie and anything else that we talked about in this video. Um, I feel like I'm still going to do the best of 2023 live. We'll see. At the time when I said I wanted to do that, I didn't have plans, but now I do have plans. So I might not do it anymore, but you'll see it scheduled. So if you see it, we're doing it. If you don't see it, we're not. So if I don't get to see you guys at the end of the year, I wish you guys a happy new year. I wish for blessings, happiness, growth, and success for you. And this upcoming year, honey, we're gonna be kicking together all next year. God willing, we're all still there. And I will see you guys in the next one.